welcome. Welcome to the Evie Hone Chapel here at Manresa. I'm Aileen Murphy and a member of the team here, a Lara Trade sister. What I'd like to propose is a meditation on this beautiful stained glass window of the Last Supper by Evie Hone. Availing of this powerful image as Visio Divina to enter into the text of John 13, the washing of the feet. Perhaps you have already prayed with this window when you were here during an oasis day or on retreat. So it may be enough just to contemplate the image. Simply switch off the sound and continue the prayer from your heart. Or you may choose to follow the reflection and pause where you wish as you go along. Evie Hone's artwork is a reflection of her lived faith journey through much suffering and loss. As a child, she developed polio, which left her partially paralyzed. And by the time she was 15, both of her parents had died and she moved to England. There she took up art as a distraction between medical appointments. By the time she was 20, the Great War was underway. Yet her art conveys warmth of tone, richness of color and depth of relationship which invites us to encounter Jesus in what is going on in our personal lives and in our world. Speaking with a friend during the week, she asked about the purpose of a window. It's essential to let the light in, and it also gives us inner and outer perspectives. Just as the window is lit by the sun, so too are we illuminated by the light of God's sun. We have been crafted by God and are continually being created to be a filter through which the light of God can shine. Open now to God's presence living within you. The upper part of the window shows Jesus with the disciples at table at the Last Supper. There is room for everyone and the table is plentiful. The scene transitions in the lower half to Jesus washing the feet of Peter. The death of Judas is shown over Jesus' shoulder, with pieces of silver scattered at Judas' feet. In this simple juxtaposition, the artist highlights the stark contrast of surrendering to God's love to transform life's experiences or to self-reliance to fix things. Perhaps we arrive at this table in an unexpected way amid our new global reality and changed personal circumstances. The one who never gives up on us, who has promised us that he will always be with us, is alongside, sharing our diverse realities. As the poet Wendell Berry says, what we need is here. And as Dan Evans' beautiful hymn invites, be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith, receive from him. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. And we begin our meditation, as always, with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. O life-giving Spirit of God, grant us open hearts to welcome you in unexpected places. 
enlighten our understanding and deepen in us a loving and generous response. Amen. So if you settle into a comfortable position in your chair, notice how you are physically. Perhaps relaxed, tense, tired, or your mind on the go all the time. However you are, just bring your awareness to your head, to your neck and shoulders, your arms and hands. Resting lightly on your lap, open. Become aware of your back being supported by a chair perhaps, and your legs and your feet supporting you and grounding you. Notice your breath. Breathe in an awareness of God's presence and breathe out any distractions or worries. All the time inhaling God's gentleness and letting go of anything that troubles you. bringing your attention to God's great love for you here and now in this moment look at the window and let your eyes stay with the very first thing that you see Keep your attention on that one part of the picture. And if your eyes wander to other parts, just gently draw them back to focus on that which caught your attention. Breathe deeply and gaze at that part of the piece for a minute or so. Let your eyes gaze at the whole picture. Take your time and look at every part of the window. See it all. Welcome all. Again, reflecting on the image. Consider the following. What emotions does this window evoke in you? What does it stir up or bring forth in you? Does it draw you in? Or do you find parts of it repulsive? How is God speaking to your life in this moment through this image? Notice what you are experiencing in your body. Does this image 
lead you into an attitude of prayer? And if so, let the prayer take form in you. Spend some time resting in silence and praying the feelings. Close your eyes for a few moments and rest. Simply be in the stillness of God's presence. hear this gospel text. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Using the gift of your imagination, put yourself in the scene. What do you notice as you look around you? The people, the expressions on their faces, their gestures, the sounds, 
the smell. Jesus' example of washing his friend's feet shows how much his love goes beyond reciprocity. His love is for everyone, regardless of how each person has responded. How is it for you to hear that Jesus has always loved you? That he will always love you? Peter reacts strongly to Jesus wanting to wash his feet. Watch this interaction and notice what's going on in you as you behold the encounter. And then Jesus arrives in front of you and places the bowl of water by your feet. What is your felt response seeing him like this? Having your foot held by another is an intimate gesture conveying trust and risking vulnerability. It is surrendering to being cared for, accepting not to be in control. Take time to speak with Jesus about some emotions that are dominant for you these days. Remember, we're not responsible for our feelings, only for our decisions. What is Jesus' response to you? What might he be asking of you today? How can you be a witness of Jesus' love at this time? Or you might offer to wash Jesus' feet. How would that be? In gratitude, take a few moments to chat with Jesus for whatever has been revealed and offered in this time of prayer. this experience as we pray. Glory be to the Father. Amen. So looking over this time of prayer, find a word, a phrase, or an image to describe your experience. You might like to write this down or express it through painting, singing or movement. May the God of compassion be with us, forgiving us, beckoning us, encouraging us to trust and try again. May the God of compassion be with us these days. Amen. Amen.